Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, March 15th. After months of waiting, Tesla's full self-driving beta version 11 is going to a wide release this weekend, according to Elon Musk. This version alone has been delayed several times in the last year, and then released to a much smaller sample size than was hoped for, finally going to a closed beta last month. Tesla did release a new version of version 11 to some beta testers last week, it looks like it went fairly well. This could be a good indicator that the wider release is indeed finally coming. Sometimes it can be tough to get excited, considering that this version has been delayed, and the literal capability of full self-driving cars has been dangled in front of the fan base for quite a long time. I don't need to regale you with the entire history, but I will anyway. Tesla Motors was founded on July 1st, 2003 by Martin Eberhard and Mark Targeting. Tesla is facing a new lawsuit instigated by an owner who is attempting to have Tesla give up its quasi-monopoly on repairing vehicles. Most people agree that Tesla bypassing the franchise car dealer model and going direct to consumers is a very good thing, especially for the company. However, the right to repair advocates that have typically targeted Apple or John Deere have also complained against Tesla. It's not so clear cut since Tesla does authorize third party repair centers, however, they are often hard to come by. Now an owner in California has filed an antitrust lawsuit against the automaker because of the lack of access to repair. The lawsuit claims that Tesla is actively working to limit access to repairs, which led Tesla owners to suffer lengthy delays in repairing or maintaining their electric vehicles. Now it bears repeating that this is not the experience of every owner, but there have been a pattern of complaints that third-party shops have a tough time getting support from Tesla as it stands. At the BMW Annual Conference 2023, the automaker announced further details while giving us a preview of its first fully electric 5 Series, the i5 sedan, launching in October. The BMW i5 is the brand's first 5 Series electric, and the automaker is giving it a truly unique selling point, according to the CEO. Production of the new sedan is expected to begin in the next few months, exclusively at BMW's plant in Lower Bavaria the largest automobile plant in Europe. Although no prices were stated, BMW has hinted at including lower-priced EVs in its lineup, which several of its rivals, including Mercedes-Benz, have actually moved away from. Weeks after teasing the public with its peak of the shadowy exterior, Kia has finally shared the first official images of the upcoming Kia EV9 SUV, both inside and out. The EV9 does in fact closely resemble the original concept that was introduced two years ago. Kudos for that. The front features a digital pattern lightning grille that Kia says has a digital tiger face. I don't really see it myself. Other exterior features include polygonal design language, particularly noticeable on the SUV's side profile, as well as triangular structures in the fender. Looking inside, one of the standout features are the second row seats of the vehicle, which swivel 180 degrees to face the passengers seated in the third row. The panoramic dash features two 12.3-inch touchscreens to control the vehicle functions while limiting physical buttons. Kia states that the EV9 will make its official global debut later this month, and they will share more information about the performance, trim levels, and more. Electrek takes a first drive in the Lucid Air Touring. As the second most affordable model in the lineup, the Touring is not the fastest, or going the farthest, but it's still a Lucid Air, where the specs still top nearly every other EV on the road, and has unmatched efficiency to boot. The luxury EV has performance that's miles beyond ample, and we didn't really miss any of the additional bells and whistles that are present on higher tier models. For that reason, this may be the sweet spot for consumers interested in the Air lineup. The sedan drives as intuitively as you want, without delay, like you almost become one with it, as your muscular instincts move to push forward or slow down. Spaceship cockpit up front, and a business lounge in the back. If you've got money, the air touring might be worth a look. UK-based EV startup Arrival has garnered a fresh $300 million in equity financing in hopes it can slow the financial bleeding that has plagued it in recent months. As previously announced, the layoffs and cut costs have taken effect, and Arrival expects the funding to help slow its cash burn rate, but they do say that they will need to raise even more money 
in order to begin the van production for the U.S. next year. The startup also said that the additional capital, combined with other measures, should provide more liquidity to the business, at least enough to keep it going, until late of 2023. Still, Arrival isn't expected to begin van production at its U.S. microfactory in North Carolina until late of 2024. Now, to keep the lights on into next year, Arrival said it is kicking off an additional funding effort focused on production. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Hugh asks, Tesla using Cobalt? Well, the answer to that is no, Hugh. Tesla is not using Cobalt for the exterior of the Cybertruck. It was just a passing fantasy of mine, as the exotic material of dendritic cobalt has been used to make metal that is 100% impervious to rust. But Tesla doesn't need to go nearly that far, just a funny idea that I had and that's all. But thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.